You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Today's problem is one that's been asked in both Amazon and Microsoft. And it's not as easy as the problems we've encountered until now. The reason being we're going to solve it using a slightly more advanced data structure. Some of you might be familiar with it. Some of you might not. But regardless, don't worry. I'll explain it to you. Let's just get straight into the problem. The problem's titled Good Pairing. You are given an array ARR in which a good pair is defined as a pair of numbers in the array which satisfy the following conditions. A, the two numbers are equal. And B, I is less than J. Find the number of good pairs in the array. So here we can see our input is the size of the array and the array itself. So it has six elements. Those are these six. And this is the output. Let's have a closer look at it. Here we can see the array itself along with its indices. Array is a zero index, so it starts from zero. Now there are three ones in this array. This one and this one form a good pair. In other words, zero and three form a good pair. But remember, Three and zero can't form a good pair because in that case, I would be greater than J. That's not allowed. Similarly, these two elements form a good pair. That is zero and four. Now we can see three and four form a good pair as well, along with two and five. So clearly here we can see four, four good pairs, which is why our output is four. Now let's have a look at the conditions. The length of the array ranges between one and hundred and each element in the array can be between one and hundred. So nothing too special right here. I'm going to leave the screen open for you guys. I want you guys to like let it cook in that little thinking part of yours. We'll be back shortly and I'll give you a few hints to ease your way. So here are your hints guys. My first hint is have a look at this array. It's the exact same array we saw in the question except it's been shuffled around. Does it really matter the order of the elements in the array, do they really matter? No, they don't. Because even here we can see the number of good pairs is totally four. So if the order of the elements don't matter, then what matters? Just think about that. And also, this is a formula that you're going to have to use in order to solve it optimally. Now, a solution some of you guys might have come up with is that what if we have two loops? And I starting from running from 0 to n minus 1, or j running from i plus 1 to n, and we're simply checking each element. That works, that, but that has a complexity of big O of n squared. We're going to attempt to solve it in a time complexity of a meager big O of n. And this is the method we're going to use to do so. Like I said before, what's important is not the order of the numbers, rather it's their frequency which is important. Now, since the order doesn't matter, let's just assume we had four ones in an array. Where they're located isn't important because the number of good pairs they form will be the same regardless. The first one is going to form good pairs with the three ones after it. In other words, three good pairs. This second one can form two good pairs with the two ones after it. That's because it cannot form a good pair with the previous one. The third one can form one good pair and the last one can't form any. In other words, the total number of good pairs is three plus two plus one. Or let's rotate it around. It becomes one plus two plus three. Let's try the same thing with five ones. The first one forms four good pairs. The second one, three. The third one, two. The fourth one, one. And the fifth one forms zero. So again, let's flip it around. It becomes one plus two plus three plus four. Right here, a pattern has started to emerge. The total number of good pairs is one plus two plus three plus dot 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 until n minus one, where n is the number of ones. So we can apply this formula, one plus two plus three, where m is n minus one. So if we were to replace m with n minus one, the formula would become one plus two plus three up until n minus one is equal to n minus one times n by two. This is the formula we're going to use. 
Now that we've calculated the frequency, let's add a third column called good pairs. We'll call it GPs. So we've established the formula is n into n minus one by two. Here we know n is three. So that's going to be three into two by two, which is three good pairs. So one forms three good pairs. All the ones in the array form three good pairs. One into zero by two, which is zero. Naturally, two forms zero good pairs because it has nothing to pair with. There's a single two in the answer. Finally, three forms two into one by two good pairs, which is nothing but a single good pair. Now to calculate the final number of good pairs, we simply take a tally. We add up each of these numbers, three plus zero plus one, to give us an answer of four good pairs. Now a question some of you might be having, and a very valid question is, if I were to use only arrays, building this frequency table would anyway take a time complexity of something like n squared. So why not just use the algorithm we discussed earlier, just have two for loops nested inside each other and count the number of uh, similar elements. That works only if we're talking about arrays. If we're talking about a certain advanced data structure, for instance, hash maps, then we can bring down the complexity of forming the frequency table to simply big O of n. If you want a quick definition about how hash maps work, make sure to click this link right here. Now let's get into the coding bit of things. This is the real meat of the code. Don't worry about all this in case you don't know. It's how you declare hash maps in Java. Now this part right here is meant to populate our frequency table. So we iterate through the array once. If that element is not present inside the hash map, we put it into the hash map with a frequency of one. If it is present in the hash map, we increase its existing counter by one. Then right here, now that we've constructed our frequency, we've got to perform the operation n into n minus one by two on each of the elements in the hash map, which is why we get the frequency. We perform n into n minus one by two and add it to our result. Now that we return our result, we should get the correct answer. Let's compile and test. A sample test case have been passed, always a good sign. Now the true submission test. We can see it's been accepted for each and every input. So guys, that's the solution to the problem good pairing. I hope you like my explanation and make sure you remember these hash maps because we're going to be using it in a lot of problems to come. Make sure you hit the three golden buttons, you know, like, subscribe, and the bell icon. Leave your comments down below. It's been Vivek, guys. I'll see you next time.